When we use Power Query to transform our data, each of the steps that we undertake is recorded in the Applied Steps window. Now, what we might not see is in the background, Power Query is recording all of those steps as functions in a language known as M. But as we undertake those steps, various values that we might use are hard coded into that M code. So for example, if we filter for values greater than 50, that number of 50 is hard coded into the code. But what if we want to change that 50 to an 80 or 100? Does that mean we have to come back into Power Query every time to change that value? Well, that can become very time consuming and very annoying very quickly. Thankfully, there's a better method that we can use, and this involves using Power Query parameters. So in this video, that's what we're going to look at. How can we make our queries more dynamic and robust by using Power Query parameters? So if you're ready, let's get started. There are multiple ways to create parameters, and I think the most useful method for Excel users is if those parameters are contained in cell values. Then when we refresh our query, it uses those values inside those cells to determine the output of our query. Now, technically, these are not official Power Query parameters. Parameters inside Power Query have a special purpose and a specific way of being created. And we'll look at that later in this video. However, for our purposes, cell values operate a lot like parameters. We'll use them a lot like parameters. So let's just call them parameters, shall we? OK, here's the data that we've got. It's some sales data that contains the date, the customer, the product, who it's sold by, and the value. And this is contained inside an Excel table called sales data. The first thing we want to do is to get this data into Excel. So with a cell selected from the table, I'll go to data and then select from table slash range. And now the Power Query editor opens up and we can see our data in the screen there. I haven't got any data types applied at the moment, so I'm going to select all of my columns, go to transform and detect data type. So my date column has come through as a date time. I'm just going to change that to a date. I'll replace that current step. My customer product and sold by are all text. And then I have a value, which is a whole number. In this scenario, this is a quantity sold and we can only have whole numbers. So I'm perfectly happy with that. Right, now let's make some transformations to our data. So with the date column selected, I'm going to go to date, change this to a month and select end of month. I'm then going to filter this so that it only includes values from the 31st of January. And I'll click OK. Now, as you'll see in the formula bar, that date has been hard coded into our M code. And this is one of the areas that we're going to make dynamic in a few moments time. Now, actually for this scenario, I don't need that date column. So I'll select that date column and then I'll right click and select remove. The other filter I'm going to apply is on the sold by column. I want to select only David and I'll come and click OK. So you'll notice here that we have filtered by everything where the value equals David. And once again, that has been hard coded into the M code. Let's say I don't need this column either. So I'll select the David column, right click and then remove. OK, that's enough transformations. I'm going to go to home, close and load, close and load two. And I want this as a table on a new worksheet and then I'll click OK. OK, that table has now loaded into Excel and this table contains only the sales for David in January 2019. But what if we want the values for Sally for March 2019? Well, we don't want to go back into our query and make those changes. So instead, let's create two tables. So up here in G2, I type the word date, the 31st of March 2019. And then down here in cell G5, I'll call it sold by. And let's enter the name Sally. With this selected, I'll press Control T to turn this into a table. I'm going to call this table 
date. I'll do the same with the other parameter. My table does have headers, so I'll select OK. And this table I'm going to call Sold By. Next, we want to load both of these tables into Power Query. So I'll select on the date table, go to data, and then click from table slash range. Now in our sales data, if we come back and have a look at our column here, so date has a date data type. So we want to make sure that we apply the same data type to our parameter. Sometimes this isn't required, but making sure it's the same is a good way to avoid any potential errors. So from there, I'll change our date into a date data type. I'll then right click on the value and go to drill down. You'll notice that we now just have a single value of the 31st of March, 2019. Here on the previous step, we had a table view, but once we drill down, we no longer have a table. Instead, we just have a list with a single value in it. Right, let's close and load this parameter into Excel. So home, close and load, close and load two. Now the thing is, we don't need this value to appear anywhere on our worksheet. Its only purpose is to filter the M code. So I'm going to click create connection only and then click OK. You'll notice in the queries and connections pane that we now have a query called date that is of a date data type and is a connection only query. Let's do the same for our sold by table. So I'll select a cell in there, go to data from table slash range. In our original query, the sold by column was a text value. So let's change this to text. I'm going to right click, drill down, and we now have an individual value of Sally. We're gonna go home, close and load, close and load two. And again, we're gonna load that as a connection only. If you're more familiar with Power Query, you'll know that we don't have to load each of these queries individually, but just for this use case, it's easy to do it in this order. So in our queries and connections, we now have our sales data, the date and the sold by, with the date and sold by both being connection only. Okay, I'm gonna go back into Power Query, and now let's apply these parameters. So over here, we have our filtered rows step, we can see the date. So instead of the date, we want to change that for our date parameter. You can see that it's been recognized there inside the IntelliSense. The second filter we have was on the step called filtered rows one, and that's where it's filtered to David. Well, let's take out David and let's replace that with the sold by parameter. Again, you can see that appears inside the IntelliSense. Let's just close and load that all back into Excel. And in Excel, we now have the value for Sally for March, 2019. What if we changed it again to say John for the 28th of February, 2019? So data, refresh all. There we go. We now have parameters that we can use to easily filter the data that we have inside Power Query. There you go, how easy was that? All we needed was a few extra queries and then to change those hard-coded values into the names of our queries. Now, as I said earlier, technically these are not parameters because parameters have a special meaning inside Power Query. So what we've seen so far is kind of unofficial parameters because they are linked to cell values. Now let's head over into Power Query and look at the proper parameter functionality. So we're now back in Power Query, and from the Home ribbon, you can see this item called Manage Parameters. So click that button, and you can see that we have this dialog box called Manage Parameters. From here, we can create parameters. So I'll select New. I'm just gonna call this Sold by Two. I can enter a description if I want to. I can also state what kind of data type it is. So let's refer to this as text. I can then have what kinds of values do I want? So I can enter a list of values manually, or if I have a query that already has a list in it, I can use that query. For now, I'm just gonna select list of values, 
And for our sold by column, there were five values that we can have. So Sally, John, David, Mark, and Lucy. From that, I can select a default value. I'll select Sally. And I can also select what my current value is. So I'll select Sally in there as well. Then I'll click OK, and that will create the parameter. So now we have this other icon on the left, sold by two. And you can see that we now have a drop down with those options that we entered in that list. If I click Manage Parameter, it brings us back to this window where we can manage the parameter that we've just created, or we can also create a new parameter. Just click Cancel on that for now. So now if we're working inside Power Query, we can use this sold by two parameter instead of a cell parameter. So I'll come to my filtered rows one and my new parameter is called sold by two. That's now been applied. I can see that that has been filtered by my sold by two selection. So if I change that back to Sally and go back to my sales data, that now updates to only include the items that have been sold by Sally. Why would we use this other type of parameter? Well, sometimes they're necessary. For example, if we're creating certain types of custom functions, or if we're using incremental refresh inside Power BI. So parameters created in this way are recognized by Power Query as having special features, whilst parameters created inside cells don't have those special features. Hopefully you'll agree that using parameters in this way is really useful because it helps us to create queries that can be more dynamic. We might use it to filter down to a cost center or a division. We might even use them to change our source files. Now I would say that if we are using that method, we should be aware that we might fall foul of the formula firewall error, which hopefully I'll cover in a future video. But we can get around that issue. We just need to know how to do it. So thank you for watching. Hopefully you found this useful. If you did, don't forget to subscribe and I'll catch you next time.